Hello and welcome to a new video. My name is Tarek Juster and today I show you three polyolefins which are used in the polymer material selection for medical device applications. To start, I will answer three main key questions for each of the materials. The first one, how does the material perform in terms of sterilization, which is important for medical device applications? Then what about the biocompatibility of the material and uh, where is the material used in medical device applications? Okay, let's start with the first polyolefin. It is polyethylene, PE. So here in the table you can see an overview of the four main types of polyethylene. So we have the, the linear low density polyethylene, we have the linear density polyethylene, high density and uh, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. So when we have a look at the low density polyethylene, this means that we have long chain branches and uh, those prevent packaging of the whole molecule and this results in a low density and this you can can see here it's uh, between 0 0.9 to 0 0.93. When we then have a look at the linear low density polyethylene, that means we have around 10 to 35 low molecular weight uh, branches per 1000 carbons. So this results in an intermediate packaging state. And the high density polyethylene, there we have uh, only 4 to 10 low molecular weight uh, branches per 1000 carbon. Um, so this results in a in a good packaging state, yeah. And the the high, so the ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. We here we have the lowest amount of short chains. That means we have the um, the the best mechanical uh, properties. Okay, so how does uh, polyethylene perform in terms of sterilization? S so ethylene oxide sterilization, for short ATO sterilization, is usually suitable for polyethylene. Steam and autoclave sterilization are not an option. So because we have this um, uh, low uh, heat deflection temperatures of polyethylene and then um, with this temperature impact we have a deformation of the part. Um, the high energy radiation sterilization methods such as gamma, gamma radiation and E-beam may be used uh, with stabilized polyethylene. And uh, what about the biocompatibility? So in general polyolefins are inert, non-polar and possess biocompatibility. So we have here no problem. Um, however, we have to be careful. Uh, surface oxidation can occur during the radiation and this uh, leads to a reduction of the biocompatibility. And as a consequence, when you apply uh, the radiation sterilization, it must be always performed under, under inert atmosphere. So where is polyethylene used in medical device applications? So when we uh, think of LDP, it is um, it's really a flexible, uh, good strength and has good barrier properties at low costs. And uh, with LDP we also have a high clarity and a good uh, tear and uh, stress crack properties. And this makes it uh, suitable for packaging um, uh, applications for example. Then uh, HDPE has a better chemical resistance than LDPE. So here we can think uh, of, uh, for example, here um, uh, surgical instruments, so open jaw slide clamps. And um, yeah, when we think of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Uh, this is um, a famous example is the arthroplasty implants. So it is um, the UHMWPE uh, together with vitamin E and the vitamin 
uh, E improves the wear and long-term stability of this um, material. Okay, let's continue with the next polyolefin. It's polypropylene, PP. And uh, so there we have three major types. However, only one is really in, uh, used in industrial scale, and this is the isotactic polypropylene. That means that all the methyl groups are on one side of the polymer chain. Um, then we have the syndiotactic, so that means the, the methyl groups are alternating uh, along the polymer chain, and atactic means they are randomly distributed along the polymer chain. And uh, yeah, some additional information. All PP structures nowadays are produced uh, by, by using either metallocene or ciclanata type of catalyst. And, um, and also uh, uh, one point uh, regarding processing of polypropylene. So metallocene based polypropylene is more advanced adventures uh, uh, for processing due to its narrow molecular weight distribution uh, and uh, this leads to uh, uh, reduced levels of distortion during injection molding and also we can make more dimensional stable parts with such a polypropylene So now to our key question, how does polypropylene perform in terms of sterilization? So steam sterilization and autoclaving of polypropylene may be applied. So only in a, a limited cycle scenario. And again, uh, due to the lower heat distortion temperature of polypropylene, so we have uh, around 100 degrees C. Ethylene oxide, so ETO, can be applied for sterilizing. This is no problem. And when you use radiation sterilization, then uh, PP needs to be stabilized by free radical scavengers. So those uh, additives prevent the degradation and the discoloration. What about the biocompatibility? So the general testing according to ISO 10993 showed that uh, PP can be used without any influencing basic immunological function to the human body. So this is no problem. So there is there are no um, negative physiological allergic or toxic reaction expected and it makes it a really a great material for medical device applications so where is polypropylene used <coughs> so in <coughs> sorry so in general there are three major reasons why you use polypropylene so first is the high clarity of the material which can be achieved then we have second uh, good Bavir properties and third is also the radiation resistance and uh, uh, a famous example uh, of the of the use of polypropylene are the syringes so the disposable hypodermic syringes so the barrel and the plancher so both parts are made out of uh, polypropylene and there we have exactly this case we need uh, the the transparency in combination with um, uh, radiation resistance for the sterilization process. Then we have uh, some other uh, um, applications, uh, packaging films, pouch films, then also drapes and, and gowns, um, then also the, the classic operation mask, for example, is also using PP fibers um, yeah, and, and many more. However, the the most famous one are the syringes. Okay, now we come to the third one, um, and those is the um, cyclic uh, ole olefin copolymers, in short COCs. So what are COCs? They are amorphous and transparent copolymers made out of the cyclic olefins, so norbornene based, and linear olefins ethylene based and this is you can see here the, the two parts the norbornin and the ethylene this forms the cyclic olefin copolymer and the question is now why is it special or what makes it special so it's uh, in general the combination of high transparency with high impact behavior and together with the superior moisture barrier properties 
and this really this results in excellent stability in terms of dimensions and processing and the COCs also have a stronger shatter resistance than glass and the uh, thermal resistance is significantly improved in relation to polyethylene and polypropylene and also uh, there is also better transmittance of the visible and also near ultraviolet violet wavelengths then also when you compare the biofringence um, it is lower than uh, that one of polystyrene and polycarbonate and um, so why why those um, superior properties where do they come from and they are mainly uh, due to the presence of the norbonane unit so you see it's a, a bridged ring structure and this prevents the crystallization and allows this high transmittance visibility and shatter resistance and depending um, how much norbonane content you're using you can tailor then the, the thermal properties um, so the higher this norbonane content the higher the heat resistance how do um, uh, COCs perform in terms of sterilizations so we have several options here it can be sterilization can be done by using gamma radiation and also ethylene oxide and depending uh, what I mentioned before the amount of norbonane copolymers will have a higher glass transition temperature which makes them more suitable for steam and dry heat sterilization then uh, what about biocompatibility so the COCs have a low amount of uh, extractables which gives them excellent uh, biocompatibility okay let's have a look at the medical uh, application which can be made out of COC and uh, the most famous example here are blister packs so as already uh, previously mentioned COCs have uh, also excellent uh, processing property especially uh, uh, film extrusion property and uh, good ther thermoformability and when you think these together with the good barrier properties and the low moisture uptake it is uh, perfect for blister uh, uh, blister film which can be used then for blister film packaging and here you see a cross section of a typical blister film so we have a upper polypropylene layer then we have in yellow the tie layer to glue together the pp with the coc which we have in the middle and makes the the largest amount here the, from the thickness then we have again a tie layer and then a lower polypropylene layer and um, yeah so it's uh, uh, film packaging is the, the major application here however there are also lab on a chip disk possible and diagnostics uh, due to the high transparency clarity high uv transmittance and the low shrinkage okay so if you want to have more information on polymer engineering topics i highly recommend you my blog find out about blastings.com and also my online courses on polymer material selection i made a general one and one on electric vehicles i will link you both the blog and the online courses in the description below okay which video to watch next uh, i recommend this video on polymer material selection for automotive interior application this can be interesting for you thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe and smash that like button Thanks, until next time. Bye.